this is a, what type of unit is that unit? Split. A split unit with the condenser uh, separated from the evaporator. And uh, the, the lines are high pressure, high pressure lines and low pressure lines. Uh, and uh, normally those lines are, they, they are together, no? Separated, of course, with insulation, no? In order to avoid that uh, the temperature of one lay, uh, line affect the other one. And, uh, and uh, cover it with the uh, insulation with foam to avoid condensation on those, on those lines. Okay, and uh, this is uh, basically the installation. And uh, normally the setup gauge is located pretty close to the compressors where uh, the fittings, the fitting for high pressure and the fitting for low pressure are located. Always, always, all the air conditioning equipment, you have those fittings, high pressure and low pressure. In those fittings, you insert the high pressure line, the low pressure line, and the yellow one is used, is used only to connect the cylinder, the cylinder to recover or uh, the cylinder to add it. Or you install here the recovery machine. You remember the videos that I did with the recovery machine and from the recovery machine to the cylinder, to the tank. Okay, this is basically the connection. And, uh, and uh, the, the most important tool in this system is uh, the gauge. You remember the pressure that uh, we are going to read in the high pressure side? It's in between 150 and 130 uh, and 230. No? around those pressures. And uh, what are the pressures in the low pressure side? Do you remember? You remember? 40. In between 40 and uh, 90. 90. 90 PSI, no? Around those pressures. Uh, th that's mandatory that you remember those, those pressures. And the pressure is fixed at 180 and 70? No. No, it's? Fluctuating. It's fluctuating because the compressor is? It's pumping. That's simple, no? Okay, and um, here, what is the name of that element? The capillary pipe or or expansion valve. In some uh, air conditioned uh, units, you don't have a capillary pipe, you have expansion valve, thermal expansion valve, or pressure expansion valve. But all of them are exactly the same. Okay, uh, this is the unit, and uh, normally you have a, what is the, what is the, 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 the temperature and the pressure over there? You remember the pressure over there? 110. Uh, the, the temperature is 110, no? And the pressure? 220, no? Around that. And the temperature, 110. 110. For that reason, you need to use also the laser temperature gun to check temperatures. Other temperature that I recommend check when the system is running is the temperature of the case of the compressor. You point it to the case of the compressor. How much should be the temperature in the case of the compressor when the compressor is running for a long period of time? It's around 120, yeah? It's too hot, no? You touch the, the body of the compressor and the compressor is too hot. It's important the, the, the temperature laser gun to check temperature on the pipes, to check temperature in the body of the compressor, and uh, be familiarized with the air condition in your, in your boat. Uh, the air condition right now is running good. Okay. That's the moment that you check temperatures. Uh, check the temperature of the body of the compressor. Check the temperature uh, here, touch, pointed over there. What is the temperature? It's running good, it's not leaking, it's perfect. If in six months I have problems, I have copy, I have information in my logbook about what are the, the conditions when uh, the, uh, the air condition running is, is, is running in good condition, no? Oh, okay, and right now let me check that. Oh, it's too high, normally it should be that one. And that one, oh, it's too high, it should be that one, yeah? Try to do that, those comparisons, not only with air condition, with the rest of the, uh, the system in your boat, for example, uh, uh, you know that uh, in diesel engine you have a gauge for the high pressure uh, in, in the common rail, no? For the for the fuel, be familiarized with the pressure when the when the engine is in in normal condition. Okay, that pressure is in that point. Let me copy in the logbook. Probably in in three months I have a problem, and I am going to check. Oh, right now the pressure is too low in the common rail. Normally it should be, and I have the picture. Yeah, 
take picture of the DC panel, of the AC panel about the voltmeter and ammeter in normal in a, in a normal day with the, the normal amount of breakers running. Normally, I have 60, 70 amps in normal conditions uh, in this panel and in this panel. And now I have 120 amps and 140 amps. Something is wrong, no? That, that's, that's why the reason uh, the breaker pops periodically. Good, it's, it's clear? When, when, when everything is okay, is the moment to check. Is the moment to read. Ah, the air condition is running perfect. Let me check the flow of water outside. Oh, nice. Normally it's like a, the water goes five feet. I have problem today with the, the air condition of the saloon and the water is coming only one feet out of, yeah? That's, that's not normal. Check, check the normal condition. Be familiarized with the normal condition. The same with the odors. You know the odor of your engine room, no? Oh, today the odor is different. It smells like a hydraulic fluid because you are familiarized with the odor of hydraulic fluid, the odor of a, a coolant, the odor of a battery uh, electrolyte, the odor, yeah, the odor of fuel. Okay, pay attention. Suppose that uh, the guy said, it's low in both sides. Low and low. What is the meaning of that? You have what? You have low pressure, it's running, but you have low pressure in both sides. Excuse me? You have low level of, of refrigerant, you have a leak. And uh, what is the first step when you have a leak? Add it? No, no, no. You need to identify where is the leak. Let me tell to you something. My friends, you need to introduce in the refrigerant dye. Do you remember the video I did in the video? You add a dye and you introduce. How you introduce the dye in the system? The low pressure. You disconnect the low pressure side, you insert that one, quick connector, and you die. And after that, what? Run the, 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 the air condition unit for five minutes, 10 minutes. And with the flashlight, with the flashlight, follow the pipe and identify where is the leak. Where is the leak? It's here. Suppose that this is the unit. It's over there. What is the solution? Cut it. Flare and connector. Insert more die and, and check again, no? This is the process. The number one is check where is the leak. Where is the leak? Oh, oh excuse me. Before you cut the line, you need to recover the refrigerant in the cylinder. When you recover the refrigerant, you cut the pipe, you do the flare, and you connect again. After that, vacuum. Vacuum the system. Vacuum. What is the process to do the vacuum? Where is connected the vacuum pump? In the low pressure side. Uh, for uh, how long? And in the low pressure side, go to 500, 500 microns. Normally, in normal conditions, when you start the unit, how much is the reading here in the, in the, in the, it's 3,000, something like this. And start to go down, 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 not quickly, it's too slow. Probably you need to run the vacuum pump for more than one hour. When the vacuum is pretty close to 500, you stop the vacuum pump, you disconnect the vacuum pump, and you are ready to introduce fresh refrigerant. Simple. Mr. Lopez, the technician in my home yesterday, cut the lines, replaced the lines, and put the refrigerant without vacuum. Yeah, the majority of the Mickey Mouse technicians, they don't apply the vacuum uh, because uh, they want to finish quickly and let's go and receive your money. But uh, this is not good, my friends, because you damage the compressor. You damage the compressor. The humidity is the enemy of the compressor. Oh, Mr. Lopez, but I disconnect the line for a, a fraction of seconds and put them back. I don't need vacuum. In those fraction of seconds, a lot of humidity enter in the system. You understand, my friends? That's very, 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 very important, especially if you want to work in the future professionally. No, no Mickey Mouse technician. The vacuum is necessary. After the vacuum, you connect the cylinder, exactly the same gas that you have in the unit, where I, I, I know 
where I found that what type of uh, uh, refrigerant I am using in my unit. The label in the compressor and the label in the evaporator, they say what is the refrigerant. It's 410, 317, yeah? They, and they say the amount of refrigerant uh, that the unit have. But uh, normally I don't, I don't follow that information, the information related with the amount of refrigerant. Let me explain why. Suppose that I install that unit, that split unit, and that split unit in the label of the compressor say that it use 2.2 pounds of refrigerant. However, when I recover the refrigerant before, before I repair the system, I put uh, the, the cylinder over the scale, and I recover the refrigerant, and I recover 3.8 pounds and in the compressor say 2.1 pounds. What happened? Why I have more refrigerant than the recommended in the compressor? It's probably in the lines. Because, exactly. Because uh, that information is with the compressor and the evaporator pretty close. But uh, if, if the boat is a 95 feet boat, the compressor in the engine room and the evaporator in the closet of the master room, you added a lot of refrigerant in the lines. For that reason, you have 3.8 pounds right now. In that case, in that case, the recommendation is, oh, I am going to put it back only 2.1 because the label, no, my friend. You need to put the amount of refrigerant necessary until what? The until the pressure reach, the pressures recommended. That's it. In that moment, I close the valve of the cylinder infinito. I don't add it anymore. That's clear? Oh, but you add it. Hey, my friend, that information in the label is, is for the units pretty close. Right now, the, the units are separate. Okay, if I have a self-contained unit, the information on the label is mandatory because I never separate the compressor and the evaporator in a self-contained unit, no? They, they are together all the time, the same distance. Okay, I, I am going to add it 2.1 because this is the recommendation on the label. Good, it's clear, my friends? I'm going to add it, a uh, refrigerant. Pay attention. With the system of how I turn on or off the system? The yeah. On the thermostat, you remember? One, number one is the breaker. Turn on the breaker in the AC panel for that air conditioned unit. Number two, what? Select the temperature that you wanted in the thermostat. Okay? And you hear that both of them, compressor and evaporator, start. Everybody follow me? Yeah? Okay. Before I select the temperature, before I start the unit, I do this. I close the valve for high pressure. I open the valve of the tank. I release with my hands a little that feeding and I release a little amount of refrigerant and I type again what I am doing. Bleeding the system, bleeding the system. After that, I open the valve of low pressure. What is the meaning of that? I have refrigerant here. And I feel one side of the compressor, the suction side, with refrigerant. Yes. In that moment, I start the air condition unit because I have in the suction side refrigerant. It's no good to start the compressor with the suction side empty. Clear? And now, and now the compressor starts to run. I open completely the valve of the cylinder and I run the unit, run the unit a couple of seconds and I open the valve of the high pressure. Right now, both gauge are reading. Yes or not? And I continue running the unit in maximum air condition with the grills open. And uh, I see that the gauge are going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, and suddenly I am in 180, 200, uh, 40, 60, uh, 40, 70, 180, 230. Okay, I close the valve, close both gauge, and I run the unit for a couple of hours. And I check, I check the quality of the air. It's good. Once again, I open both valves with the cylinder closed, both valves, and I check pressures. Good in low pressure, good in high pressure. My, my pressures are good. The air condition is running good. The compressor, I touch the body of the compressor. It's normal, it's warm, but it's not ultra hot. That's perfect. What about this drain? This is what? 
Fresh water. What type of water is that water? Fresh water. It's fresh water. Why fresh water? Where is coming that fresh water? From the atmosphere. Because the pipes, those pipes are frozen. When the ambient air pass around those pipes, what happened? Water around the external surface of the pipes drops by gravity, condensation. This is fresh water. And that fresh water normally is coming out or in the bilge, and with the bilge pump, you pump it. But uh, if it's like this, you need to create that loop. What is the name of that loop? T trap. T -trap. What is here? Fresh water. What is the function of the P trap? Avoid that gases enter. Because normally that air conditioned unit is located in, 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 in the room, no? In the closet. What happens if a carbon monoxide enters and penetrates the cabin? The big sleep. Finito, no more. That's okay?